Hey everybody. Good morning and uh Merry Christmas. And happy seventh day of Hanukkah. Um coming at you with one more bit of content for content week. Um here we have a draft analysis, which is uh, also a little bit of a rebuttal. We'll get more into what that means in a little bit. So first of all, here's my team. First picked Golden Go, uh, which as you can see, I rounded out with all of these other picks. Um, that's Tinkatuff in the bottom right, the pre-evolved form of Tinkatuff, if you weren't aware. Not the little baby one, the middle one. Um, I started with Golden Go. It's my new favorite Pokemon. It is legitimately my favorite Pokemon of all time. I think it's so much fun. Um, I just love the design. It's my new mascot. Um, I'll be designing a new logo based on the Pokemon, although I do like how this logo turned out. Um, but this Pokemon really, I think, is just unbelievable. Um, I would have first picked it even if it was a nine point Pokemon. Um, not just because it's my favorite Pokemon, but because I think it's really, really strong. Uh, not only is that strong uh, spread move make it rain, totally broken, but the typing and the stats are pretty solid. Um, and I think the ability, uh, good as gold, is even better in draft than it is on ladder. Um, if you're bringing some sort of like weird tech status move like a power split or um, torment or leech seed, whatever it is um, that I wouldn't expect to see on ladder, I don't have to worry about that with Golden Go. All I have to worry about is um, status moves that affect field uh, or attacks. Um, and Terrasilize helps me get out of those attacks. So I think it's a very strong ability um, that limits my opponent's options in prep. Uh, and it checks a lot of boxes, fake out immunity, steel type, strong spread attacker, strong special attacker, which there are very few of in this format. Um, after getting Golden Go, this was what the rest of my plan looked like. So first priority was a ground type. I did a practice draft, if you didn't see my last video, um, feel free to check that out. Um, so few ground types, so few ground types. Uh, I very quickly realized while doing my practice draft that a lot of teams that needed a good like steel killer, that needed a, a rock resist, that needed a good check to electric types and fire types, were gonna end up with Palisand, we're gonna end up with um, Gabite, we're gonna end up with Camerupt. Um, no disrespect to those Pokemon. I, I used all of those Pokemon and loved them, but I really wanted something top tier, um, especially to beat Steel Terra type Pokemon, which I think are gonna be really common and really good against Golden Go, uh, resisting its Make It Rain. I noticed that all of the fire types that I liked were expensive, um, and I was going to try to prioritize one if I could get it early, um, but sooner into the draft, I realized that Volcarona and Torkoal were not gonna get taken. Um, and they were both passable as fire types for me, um, and I decided that if I couldn't get uh, a good fire type at some point in the middle of the draft at the right value that I wanted, that I was just going to have to shell out for them because I needed that strong fire type, um, especially to beat steel type Terra Pokemon as well. Fire being the best type in both resisting and being super effective against steel. Um, and so I was going to have to shell out for a good one. Uh, the next thing I noticed was that I didn't really like a lot of the water types. This format, like every format, has more water types than other, other kind of Pokemon, but a lot of them are uh, rain-based, um, or just monotyped waters that I don't really love of how they fit on the team. Um, so my options for water was actually a lot more limited than in a lot of other formats, where, um, sometimes... You can say, oh, I'll, I'll get a water round six, round seven, round eight. Um, where this draft board, I really thought, if I don't prioritize a good water, I'm going to get stuck with Vaporeon. I'm going to get stuck with, you know, um, Veluza. I'm going to get stuck with Whiskash. Something that I just didn't really want to use. Honestly, Vaporeon is a great Pokemon. Um, but it just wasn't what I was looking for this draft. Um, with a fairy type, not only is it important as it always is, but this format especially has such high power dragons and the fairies are really much weaker than that you've got your Florges, you've got your guard of war um you've got your hatterene and you've got your azumarill which i ended up getting um outside of that the options are really limited tinkaton um but you compare that to dragapult 
uh, Dragonite, Hydreigon, Salamence, Baxcalibur, all five of those are, are top tier meta threat dragons um, that are going to blow the fairies out of the water. And that's not even mentioning the lower tier dragons that people can also get. Noivern that I ended up picking up, um, Dragalge, uh, Flapple, um, the list goes on uh, with the scary dragons. Everyone can have one on their team, dropping Draco Meteors, um, throwing out, you know, Outrage, and I really wanted to be able to resist that. Plus, Combo Zola with Golden Go and resisting Dark type moves. Um, and Golden Go Steel type covering um, Prism of Fairies Weaknesses, that fantasy core. Uh, the last two things that I wanted to note are really what this video is about, which is uh, I was going for bulky offense um, and really prioritizing uh, balancing out the Titan Shark, um, which we'll get into at the end of the video. But first, just going through the team. Ground type, Mudsdale. Really, I looked at the board, I did my practice draft, and I said, it's Mudsdale, and then, ugh, Crooked Dial is great, but doesn't have a single target ground type move that's strong enough to matter. Um, Stomping Tantrum, same with Garchomp even, and with Golden Go being my first pick, I really don't want to have to be running a single target ground move, uh, uh, Earthquake. I want to be running a single target ground move. So is it is it Palisand that I'm running? Is it another, you know, special attacker using Earth Power? I don't know. Um, Mudsdale being the only Pokemon uh, to get high horsepower, um, that stab high horsepower, makes it a really good contender. Combo that with three great abilities, um, two giving it Intimidate immunity, Inner Focus making it immune to flinching. Um, and Stamina being a great ability as well to combo with Body Press, especially Terra Fighting Body Press. Um, and having solid coverage and a great speed tier for Trick Room. And it was a done deal. I had to get this thing early. Um, and I think it will um, get its its worth. I've used it a little bit on the VGC ladder. And I think this Pokemon absolutely pulls its weight even um, up against stuff like Garchomp and, and in, a, in a meta game with multiple like Levitators and stuff. Um, really good for taking out steel types. Volcarona ended up being my fire type. Super defining for my team, but I did pick it the final round of the draft. Uh, I knew midway through, especially after Salazzle got picked, um, that I was going to have to take Volcarona or Torkoal. Um, much preferred Volcarona for Rage Powder and the Speed Tier, um, just being a lot more versatile for the kind of team that I was drafting. Uh, I initially wanted Salazzle, like I mentioned. Um, better Speed Tier, um, cheaper allowing me to free up you know more points um but when i saw that went i realized okay i'm gonna need to really budget my my team so that i can get the right thing so i really need to extract as much value as i can from the um lower tiers uh, and then i ended up doing that uh, i ended up with three two-point pokemon in skuntank who was my mvp uh, a couple seasons ago um absolutely love that Pokemon. I drafted it just to counter um, Daddy's Indeedee Hat team. Excuse me. Because um, it can one-hit KO both Hatterene and Indeedee. Uh, and is immune to expanding force. But it really surprised me at how much I was able to bring in that season. Uh, and this season I think it's even in a better position because um, it's got some some tools like uh, Faint, um, Snarl, and, and other things other Pokemon on my team don't have. Um, so it has a lot of reason to be brought. Um, along with Tinkatuff and um, Aloha Mola, who I'll describe a little bit later. Uh, Azuro. Um, it says checks boxes like a champ here. That's really because it is a water type that I like and a fairy type that is good. Um, that's what I got it for, <laughs> to be a water and a fairy, to do what those typings do. Um, I love the Pokemon. Uh, it's also my strongest priority user with its Aqua Jet, uh, more consistent than Skuntank Sucker Punch at least. Um, and it's also a hella strong uh, physical attacker and a TR threat. Uh, it does all of those things. It does not do a whole lot more than that, although of course you know I'm gonna be bringing spicy stuff on this guy every week. Uh, but truly, like, it was exactly what I was looking for. I was looking at this and I was looking at uh, the aqua form of Paul de Antoros, which I really liked for Intimidate, uh, for Anger Point, which I would have paired it with a Cryogonal probably for that Frost Breath, uh, potentially Kudchu even, I think is going to be played a good bit in draft on certain times, because uh, that ability is totally viable, um, if you can figure out the right set for it. Um, 
And I like the speed tier on that guy better, fighting type being important on my team as well. I ended up with Pissimian, which I think is a great Pokemon that's uh, gonna come along. But this guy ended up taking the edge just because I knew I could get a fighting type later, but if I didn't get this uh, round four um, when I had it, I was like, there's no way Floor just is getting back to me, which was the only other fairy on the board that I was looking at. It ended up lasting, um, but I'm still happy with the Azumarill pick. Really, really solid Pokemon, and gives my team a core of um, three super meta-relevant Pokemon, Golden Go, Azumarill, and Volcarona. Um, that, that's three out of four, uh, only bringing four Pokemon per game, and that's a pretty threatening core. So my opponents are going to have to prep for that. Um, three top tier threats in addition to um, Noivern, Rotomo, Mudsdale, which I think also demand a lot of respect, let alone the rest of my draft. Speaking of the rest of my draft, here it is. Um, on the left, we have our Pokemon that do the thing. Alamomola does Wide Guard. Noivern does Tailwind. Giraffe Ring does Trick Room, and Tinkatuff does Fake Out. They're the only Pokemon on my team that get those moves, um, save for Volcarona, who also gets Tailwind from Noivern. But mainly these Pokemon are coming in. They've got that one move slot, which is going to be that move every single game. Um, and then something else in the remaining three slots. Um, Alamomola, Tinkatuff, and Giraffe Ring are probably going to be clicking Helping Hand a lot. Um... Noivern obviously going to be clicking stuff like um, whatever Poppin brought last season. <laughs> Watch his videos. Um, but he proved how good this thing is. Um, Frisk especially is an ability that I just am so excited to use in this format. Especially with um, safety goggles uh, blocking Volcarona. Um, Volcarona's Rage Powder with uh, Covert Cloak. Um, potentially getting in the way of, of a lot of things. Um, Really, really, really good to know items uh, this generation more than ever, just because there's more variety uh, that you have to play around. Of course, these Pokemon are versatile as well, um, and I've got all kinds of ideas and secrets um, of stuff that I'm planning on doing with them. Um, I think a lot of my... Oh, there's some text messages from my girlfriend. Um, you can probably think of some of the uh, fun texts that I'm going to be doing if you uh, really get in the lab and focus on the synergies in my team. Uh, I think there are a lot of fun, exciting things that you can do that are not too hard to notice, but I'm not telling you shit, all right? Uh, that's on you to come up with it yourself. Uh, the other three guys are not ponies. They're not one-trick ponies. There's not one move that I'm going to be running on them every week. You can make an argument that I'm probably going to run close combat on Pissimian every week. You can make the argument I'm probably going to run Leaf Storm on Rotom every week. Um, but those are not as game-defining as something like a Tailwind or a Trick Room or a Fake Out. Um, so I see them as more like their typing situates themselves in a certain way, their move pool and their stats uh, put them on my team in a certain way that they fill a niche nothing else does, um, and they round out the team really well. They're going to be coming for a lot of different reasons, um, but they also have their place on the team. So, bulky offense. Um, the reason I made this slide, the reason I, I'm making this video really as a rebuttal is that I've seen some people talking about um, bulky offense not being as good this generation, um, or maybe hyper offense being the dominant play style. And I think in draft, uh, that is something I disagree with. Um, first of all, I think bulky offense between past generations and this generations has proven itself to be the most consistent team style. Hyper Offense is just so volatile. I used a Hyper Offense team last season, and I really struggled to perform. Um, it wasn't just that I had Politoed and didn't have Kingdra on the team. It was that the whole team was built around um, just hitting hard and going fast. And when I didn't have speed control, I lost. Um, truly, I don't think I've ever seen a full-on control team in draft with, like, Incineroar and Luxray as the core, uh, uh, you know, just like pivoting out the whole time. Um, I've seen teams that go very, very bulky in that direction, but I've never seen a team that didn't have enough offensive pressure to really um, make a difference. I suppose the closest thing to that would be just teams with low stats, um, and I wasn't going to let that happen, I, so I didn't want that kind of a control team. So something in the middle uh, where my team has bulk, um, where my team has 
a lot of Pokemon in like middle speed tiers that can work in Trick Room or Tailwind um, that allow me to still win games if I'm slightly out of position or don't have the right speed control. Um, just seems like by far the most consistent thing to do. Uh, the reason um, that I wanted to point it out specifically this generation is because when a Pokemon terrestrializes, that turn it is a surprise, and especially in Draft League, you don't know what your opponent's going to be bringing, and their choice of Terra is always going to be a surprise, and, and oftentimes an unwelcome surprise. Uh, if my team um, ends up, you know, being really countered by a certain Pokemon tearing into an unexpected typing, um, you know, if I'm facing a Pokemon that's weak to Fire and Electric, uh, Corviknight, for instance, and it Terra Stalize is into a Dragon type. I'm usually not going to be expecting that, right? But I face a Dragon-type, suddenly I can't kill this Corviknight because I left my Azumarill at home, and I'm fucked. Um, I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself. But um, in that one turn, if I needed to kill the Corviknight so that it didn't Brave Bird my Ludicolo and end my uh, team, I'm fucked. But on a team with a little bit more bulk, it's a little bit more likely to be switching out, pivoting, running defensive sets, running protect even, the impact of that surprise is going to be lowered. Um, and so, I apologize for that Dragon-type Corviknight diversion. That didn't really <laughs> make sense in adding to the point. What I'm trying to communicate is that in a super fast-paced team, in a team that doesn't have the ability to switch defensively, that doesn't have the ability to sustain throughout games, that one turn of surprise matters so much more and you naturally counter the surprise factor of the um, the terra typing and limit its ability to totally swing games and steal games away by having a slower paced team um and lastly lastly the team is versatile if you look at my team it's hard to say that it's not a bulky offense team almost all of my pokemon can solidly take hits especially the top guys um Golden Go, Volcarona, Azumarill, Mudsdale, Rotom. You know, those guys are coming a lot. That's my Firewater Grass Core right there, plus Golden Go. Um, and Mudsdale, my Steel and my Ground type, really important guys. Um, really, really bulky. <laughs> um, I've got a fewer, uh, a few frailer Pokemon. I've got the Noivern, and I've got the, the Passimian, who don't always take hits quite as well, although those two both have respectable bulk. There's no Weavile on my team. There's no Salazzle. Um, and they can certainly um, be built out to take hits better. But I also think when you look at my team, clearly there's no lack of power. Um, almost every Pokemon I have on my team has an offensive stat of over 100, um, save for the purely support Pokemon, Drafferig, Tinkatuff, Olomomola, uh, Noivern, and they also have big moves. Uh, Noivern Draco Meteor, make it rain. Um, Mudsdale has high horsepower, the strongest single target ground type move in the format. Um, and uh, they've also got high stats, huge power. Um, 133 on Golden Go, 135 on Volcarona, um, attacking on both sides as well. So I've got the ability to go more HO and more defensive. Um, on a week-to-week -week basis, which a team that is too bulky uh, or too um, offensive doesn't have the ability to do. And the last thing is is the type chart. Um, I've seen people say, I've seen people specifically say, the type chart matters less this season than it has ever mattered before. And I would like to respectfully suggest an alternate perspective to that. Um, I think in the days of Terra, the type chart is more important. Forgive me, I'm a little congested. Um, than it has ever been before. Um, and that's for three reasons. One, a team with a imbalanced or weak type chart is exploitable. You can only Terra one out of your three Pokemon. But if you end up bringing four Pokemon who are all weak to a type, or you don't have a resist to a type, your opponent can simply Terra into a Pokemon 
uh, one of the Pokemon into a type, and then you have maybe one Pokemon who resists that if you can predict, excuse me, the type they're terroring into. But your opponent is still able to put a lot of pressure on the other three Pokemon with that Terra type Pokemon. Um, not only is it uh, offensively scary, uh, if your team is, for example, super weak to ground, to be facing uh, ground type Terra Pokemon using uh, Stab Earthquake on you every week, but also it's problematic defensively. If you're facing a Pokemon such as Garganagle, um, who Terra's into a type that your team doesn't have the ability to beat if you don't have strong type diversity on your team you're gonna have to terra into the type to beat that pokemon but you don't know what terra type that pokemon's gonna be terroring into and so your opponent has much more ground than you do in deciding what to do you're gonna have to be predicting all right i don't have a, a steel type or poison type so the garganacle is probably terroring into a fairy type so i should bring a steel type terra on my pokemon but then you're opponent actually decides to tear their Garganacle into a flying type because you don't have an ice type or a rock type and now you're screwed. Um, having a lot of type diversity makes it a lot harder to make those choices on those super defensive hard to kill Pokemon. Uh, and finally, uh, having a weak type chart or a, a type chart with a lot of red or a lot of holes limits you. Um, people have been saying that it's um, the, the least important generation for the Terra chart, but Draft League is all about keeping your options open. Uh, it reminds me of drafting Mew uh, in singles Draft Leagues. When you take Mew, it has every hazard, it has removal, it has the ability to run setup sets, uh, sets offensive, defensive sets. Um, it can do anything. But if you draft Mew and you expect it to be your hazard setter, your hazard removal, your setup sweeper, um, your defensive uh, pivot your special and physical wall breaker you can't really use Mew for what it's best at which is finding the holes in your opponent's team and exploiting them uh, if it's forced to be your defogger for that week then you can't be running whatever set that you were thinking of running otherwise um, whereas if you draft around it well and have other Pokemon that fill all the roles Mew's a bonus guy um, and can catch your opponent off guard that's always the best way to draft with Mew. Adding so much versatility to an open Terra format means that every team essentially has a bunch of mini Mews because any Pokemon can Terra into a type that gives them a totally different role. A Gudra can Terra into a Grass type if you really need that Pokemon to be immune to um, Rage Powder. Sap Zipper makes it immune to Spore already. Um, Hydreigon can tear it into a fire type if you really need a Pokemon with that strong stab heat wave and you don't have that otherwise. Uh, this is why I have them green and red, obviously. Um, but if you're forced to run Terra Fire Hydreigon every week, you can't tear out any of the other Pokemon on your roster. And if your type chart is limited, you're going to have to be committing to terroring the same few Pokemon the same ways. If you have Hydreigon on a roster, with a bunch of fairy weaknesses, and you just say, ah, I'll just tear my Pokemon. Well, you've, you've teared one, but the more you tear the same Pokemon, the more predictable you get. The easier it is for your opponents to build and play around that, they come to expect it, which removes the surprise factor, and you can't tear any of the other Pokemon. And one of the best ways to win games in this format is to come out with an unexpected set on an unexpected Terra Pokemon. Plus, when you're looking at the draft AQ, the HQ, if you see a bunch of red, you're saying, oh, it's fine, I'll just tear my Pokemon, swap that. Now I'm not weak to that typing. But if you're not weak to that typing, are you really using your Terra best in a way to win the game? To me, that's playing to not lose, right? I have to tear my Pokemon so that my team isn't super weak to this typing. But now you're not tearing your Pokemon into whatever the best offensive type is to do the most damage and to clean up, to exploit your opponent's weaknesses instead of making up for your own, own weaknesses. So there's the, uh, the mindset on why. I think the type chart actually is just as important as before, if not more, to keep you open, um, to prevent your opponent from destroying you um, by exploiting your holes. At the end of the day... Um, you can only tear out one Pokemon, and you have an 
minimum three others on the team, but really you have, you know, 11 others, 10 others, that are being considered for options. And if you always have to say, I gotta bring this Pokemon and I gotta tear it into this type, you're really not able to make the most of your draft. That's just my opinion. Thank you for watching. Um, this is uh, uh, fun for me uh, to make a little video. Um, and I wanted to say Merry Christmas to everybody. Um, happy 7th day of Hanukkah once again. Um, thank you for checking out this video. And thank you so much for all of the kind words on my last one. Uh, it really made a lot. I really, really... Uh, Appreciate you guys checking out that vid, um, and I hope this vid can also be enlightening in some way. Um, I, I really do think that as this generation goes on, um, we will see bulky offense or uh, games that can uh, teams that can control games better and not be blown back in an instant by a strong Terra, um, and teams with solid balance type charts um, performing well. And that's all. Thanks so much for watching.